Yo, guys, so you may have heard before that speed is very important in Rocket League, but it may be more important than you think. If you're already a quicker player, these tips will only help you to maximize this playstyle. If you're a slower player, this video may change the way you play Rocket League forever. Without messing around too much, my goal for this video is to do these four things. Number one, show you why speed makes you more aware. Number two, explain that boost is no longer something you worry about. Number three, make you better defensively. You triggered my trap card! And number four, how to easily trick and outplay your opponents. If you are interested in any of those things and you're wishing to get better and maybe achieve supersonic legend, you'll want to be working on these things now before the new season drops. Oh, and a couple weeks ago, I called GameStop to ask if they would consider subscribing to my channel, and since we freaking nailed that call, I figured I would try my luck with Best Buy this week. Thank you for having my and I think I can help you. Yeah, I was just wondering if uh, anybody there plays Rocket League. Plays what? Rocket League. Oh, Rocket League? Yeah. Are you Googling it? Yeah. I've never played this game. It's a good game. So I'm calling because I make um, videos for Rocket League. And I'm just trying to get some more subscribers. And I was hoping maybe you could check out some of the videos in the channel and maybe uh, see if you want to subscribe. Yeah, I can I can do that here. There's a lot of gamers here Sweet. that work here. All right, let's jump right into things. It is really easy to find information on how to perform certain mechanics or cool shots, but there's a huge difference between nailing a shot in a custom training pack and being able to win a Rocket League game. While focusing on 2v2 and 3v3s, awareness and game sense are things that are hard to master, let alone teach. But I have a simple way to define awareness and game sense in Rocket League. Who is hitting the ball next? Let me explain it to you this way. When watching a horse race, at the beginning, everyone is at the same position and it's impossible to know who will finish first. Only when the race is nearing its end and everyone is in full stride that we can guess who is going to win. And this is even easier in Rocket League. Check this out. Because you can't go over a certain speed, when you're moving towards the ball and an opponent is moving towards it as well, if you're already maximum speed, which we know because of these fancy little boost trails under your wheels, you will know who is going to win this race, even in real time. On the other hand, if you are moving slow and need to build up your momentum, it's hard to guess if you'll get to the ball first. So, much like the horse race, you will have visual cues that will tell you if you're going to get to the ball first. And what makes this even easier is rocket cars can only go so fast, so there is a cap. Using this clip as an example, by maintaining supersonic speed even when you're not actively going for the ball, you can start to scan the field and make an easy decision on when to go in because you can approach any ball at maximum speed. So, make sure to always maintain supersonic. I can hear you guys now. Seabell, you can't just boost forever. Perfect, this leads me into the second portion of this video. This part might be simple, but I feel that you guys need a reminder. Using more boost makes you go faster. Duh, right? Well, let's reverse this sentence. Going faster makes you use less boost. Hear me out. When in supersonic, you only need to tap your boost every once in a while to maintain that speed. Additionally, it's very important that when you get bumped or even landing from aerials that you are most likely going to be supersonic already and you need to maintain this at all costs for my next point. Try and take wider paths to keep supersonic. This will be the major change you do in your gameplay. While practicing this, you will actually begin to see more of the field and just like my first point, you'll become more aware of what's going on. A lot of players, especially those who feel they need to hit the ball all the time, aka sweaty ball chasers, <clears throat> tunnel vision on the ball as if it's some sort of black hole. So to make this easier, here's just the two things you need to worry about. If you aren't going up for a ball, stay on the ground. This will allow you to adjust your direction in a split second. If you are not already supersonic, save your boost and use your flips, but try not to flip while the ball is about to change directions. This is very important. You cannot make major adjustments to your positioning while flipping, and you may have to spend even more boost to get back into position after a poorly timed flip. I would much rather see someone use their boost to get up to supersonic if the ball is about to be moved. To illustrate the differences in boost management and maintaining high speed, I have a side-by-side -side look at a Diamond player and a 2K plus MMR player in 2v2. Let's look at them in real time first so you can get a feel of the speed difference. 
One thing I noticed in higher ranks is that the last guy back is always moving so fast and is ready to go in any direction at any point. Our diamond player, however, is moving slowly and when the ball is available to be potentially hit, he is way too slow to go for it. And since he wasn't full speed, he couldn't gauge who was going to win the race and he challenged. The high rank player, however, is already at that maximum speed and is able to get on defense quickly. Oh, and the higher rank player also isn't even spending that much boost, but is moving across the field expertly. Notice as well that this player follows the tip of stay on the ground so he can quickly change directions when his opponents make quick shots. All right, so you're moving around faster and that's cool and everything, but what about going back post and defending? You can't move that fast and defend also, can you? Well, playing this fast is only going to make your defense stronger. Take a look at RLCS and see how often these guys are parked in net. Although these games are 3v3, this applies in 2v2 as well. Moving at high speed on defense is where you want to be. Here's the two things that you'll get from high speed play that'll make you a brick wall on defense. The first thing you need to look out for is the hard cut. If you're zooming around on defense, when an opponent loses control or your teammate makes the other team throw it away, you have a decision to either keep your momentum and continue defending, or if you're 100% certain, you can turn really fast and make the next hit. By being max speed, you can make this cut very fast. If you can't make a good hard cut or the other team has good possession, it's time to fake challenge. Doing this at full speed will help add some seriousness to your challenge and you'll most likely get them to bite, especially in threes. Here's my golden rule. As long as you won't give up a shot, fake challenge twice and if they still haven't thrown the ball away or lost control, full send. In twos and threes, if you fake challenge and they play over you, they most likely lost control and your teammate- What's the matter, scared? But whatever you do, make sure that you're maintaining high speed when making your cuts so you can quickly make another one. Look for windows where your opponent has lost control. All right, for our final part, it's time to take advantage of your speediness and start to freak your opponents out. If you're moving towards a ball at max speed and show no signs of slowing down, your opponents are going to think you won't stop or slow down at all. They will also be intimidated by your speed and want to match that speed. The second you slow things down or play around them, they can't react to this. So here's the deal. While moving in supersonic, you'll recognize if you have to A, hit a power shot, or B, play around the opponents. What I mean by playing around your opponents is you're either going to pass to yourself or you're going to pass to your teammates. Know that your opponents are going to try their best to read your intentions and if you're constantly moving in supersonic, they're going to have a really hard time keeping track of you. And if they do, they'll assume you're just going to hit it hard and fast. Use this to your advantage. Special note, once you've mastered speed for your own game, you can begin to shift your attention towards the other team and start to judge their speed. Once you can manage your own while simultaneously monitoring your opponents, welcome to the top 2-3% to of Rocket League players. Did I just get demoed? Oh yeah, I forgot one important thing about playing as fast as possible. There are villains in this game. Names like Woody and Rocket Sledge, whose sole purpose is to demo you and ruin your fun. Being really fast though can help you avoid these terrible people. If you're someone who gets demoed a lot, you are most likely moving too slow and predictably. When you're in Supersonic, it's much easier to avoid demo attempts. But if you happen to join the dark side, these tips will help you become just like the Siths who want nothing but trouble. Okay guys, there was a ton of information in here, so make sure you rewatch any part you need to and share with any friends who could benefit from this. If you're watching this far in, you're already awesome, but you'd be considered the realist if you like the video right now and leave your best comment. We'll see you next week. Later. All I know is I need to be somewhere else to set me free. I don't know what to do now, need to figure it out, but I don't know how.